this is a Cadillac Lyric. Now, did this car technically come out two years ago? Yes, but Cadillac only sold 120 units in 2022. That number jumped to 9,000 in 2023 and is already almost at 6,000 as of April of 2024. So production and availability of Lyric has skyrocketed since it came out technically two years ago. So we can really think about this as a brand new vehicle, which it is, an all new model, which it is, and Cadillac's first EV. Now, Cadillac has also shown us what its next three electric vehicles will look like, not counting the $300,000 Celestic. We have the full-size Escalade IQ, the subcompact Optic, and the three-row midsize SUV, the Vistic. And this Lyric is kind of our window into what Cadillac's future and all-electric future will be with those next three models. So let's find out what that's gonna be like. If you are looking at buying or leasing a new car, it could be a luxury crossover like the Cadillac Lyric or an insane performance car like this Corvette E-Ray. I can help by curating a customized list of vehicle recommendations that fit your needs. Visit drakemoscow.com forward slash buying a car to see how I can help you find a new car. To start, and this is true for basically every element of this vehicle, Cadillac really went the extra mile to make this feel like a luxury car and not just a leather cladded wood trimmed car from General Motors, because this does share a general platform and architecture with the Chevy Blazer EV and the Honda Prologue and the Acura ZDX, but Cadillac really made sure that this Lyric feels like a luxury car and not just like a nicer Blazer EV. And it starts with how it looks. I think this is an absolutely beautiful car, very art deco in a way with its styling. I love how the taillight swoops up and connects with the C-pillar. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. This is the Sport 3 Cadillac Lyric. So it has a bunch of black accents on the roof and around the windows and the wheel wells and the side view mirrors. I think it looks really good. The Sport also gets you these body color door handles on non-Sport Lyrics. They're chrome and I find those a little tacky. I like the body colored ones better. They'd also look good in black. You also get these massive 22 inch rims, which really help fill out the wheel wells on this particular Sport 3 Lyric. I absolutely love how this car looks. Super sexy, super different, really does go to show that you can make a crossover super appealing, super different, and Cadillac really did go that extra mile again with the exterior styling of this car. I think they absolutely nailed it. Not to harp on this too much, but I do think it is the rear and the rear three quarters of this car that look the best. I absolutely love the taillight design. Again, you kind of have this light bar effect, although it doesn't go all the way through. It looks really good lit up. I'll put in a clip of it at night. That connects around to the C pillar. You also have these lower lighting elements, which are also functional. They act as a brake light. Your third brake light also looks really cool. It's a vertical. It's not very wide. I think that looks really good when it's lit up. Very different, very crisp. I also just love all of the body panels. This color is also really nice. I was a little skeptical of a bright red Cadillac Lyric, but especially in this Sport 3 trim level, looks really good. You press the Cadillac logo or you can kick underneath and you get a power opening tailgate, obviously, that will reveal 28 cubic feet of cargo capacity with all seats in place. Lyric is strictly a two row, five seater vehicle. Under the hood of the Cadillac Lyric, you're gonna find nothing. No engine, obviously, but no frunk either. There is no front storage. So that 28 cubic feet of storage in the rear is your only cargo area in this car. But underneath the car in general, you're gonna find a 102 kilowatt hour battery pack that goes out either through just the rear wheels, making 340 horsepower and going 314 miles per charge or through all four wheels in a dual motor setup that makes 500 horsepower and goes 307 miles per charge. It's pretty cool that you only lose seven miles of range when jumping from rear wheel drive to all wheel drive. And it's hopping into the Lyric where you really feel Cadillac's willingness to go the extra mile the most. This is the first bespoke Cadillac interior ever. And that means that none of the parts or switch gear in this cabin are shared across any of GM's other brands. GM is kind of notorious or has been historically notorious for having a large and widely tapped parts bin that Chevy, GMC, Buick, and Cadillac would all just kind of congregate around and then use for their own interiors. This Lyric has nothing shared with any of the other brands. It is all Cadillac and it feels really nice. This is definitely a step up from even vehicles like the Escalade. This is a nicer interior. This just feels a lot more premium. You have open pour wood trim that has inlays for ambient lighting, which looks really nice. You have your seat controls on the doors instead of on the side of the seats. That's a first for Cadillac and they look really nice. They have chrome finishes around a gloss black surface. You have a new steering wheel design that is also really elegant. It has a soft touch center, which is pretty rare, even on luxury vehicles. 
All of the controls have knurling and the cup holders even have knurling finishes. These beige sheets, they're not my favorite color, but there are several color options. And even though they're not my favorite, they have nice perforation and stitching patterns to them. There are speakers in the headrest. They have uh, contrast like maroon piping. You have these really nice AKG stereo system and the speaker grills look really nice. The speaker is like, they aren't amazing. They're really good, but they're not the best speakers I've ever heard. Uh, that is, I think, one area where this cabin could be improved is with better speakers, but you can turn them up really loud and it sounds really good. And the highlight of this interior is this curved 33 inch LED display that goes from driver's A pillar to like the passenger side of the center of the vehicle. This is a really impressive piece of technology. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Cadillac. I'm not sure how many more uh, EVs from General Motors are going to have these systems built in. Uh, turn, sounds like not many because Cadillac and General Motors in general is moving away from Apple CarPlay and Android Auto into a Google built-in system that will just have all the apps natively. I, I'm not a big fan of that idea. I love CarPlay and it's actually one of the best CarPlays you can have because you can put your navigation, like your Apple navigation, in the center screen as well. So you can have your music on your uh, infotainment system and your navigation on your instrument cluster. It's really good. I absolutely love how CarPlay is displayed on this screen because even though it's curved, they've given CarPlay a background. So it just takes up the full screen. This is a really good infotainment system and instrument cluster. It has been slow in the past and CarPlay has actually dropped a couple times or not completely dropped where it'll just like stop playing the music. Uh, like the music suddenly won't load and I don't think it's a connection issue, but on the whole, I love how it's displayed. I love how it looks. Here in the second row of the Cadillac Lyric, it's not quite as roomy as I would have hoped. There is plenty of knee room sitting behind my ideal driving position. I'm six foot two and plenty of foot room underneath the seat in front of me, but headroom is a little bit on the tighter side. If I lean back and sit upright, my head does hit kind of the cutout for the panoramic sunroof, which is a little unfortunate, although I can kind of fit if I do slouch a little more. Other than that, it's pretty comfortable. Other than there is this strange hump right at the base of the seat, like kind of where your butt touches the back of the seat. Uh, it's got like the Isofix anchor points for child seats, but I find, I kind of find my, like my butt hitting that it's not all of that comfortable. So then I kind of have to sit forward a little more. I also think the base of the seat could be a little more cushioned. The back is very well cushioned. Armrests are very soft. You have uh, automatic rear windows here in the back, two USB-C charging outlets, a third climate control zone for the back where you can control your fan speed, uh, fan direction, and the temperature, dual heated seats for the outboard seats, map pockets on both seats, no peasant blockers, but you do get a full view of this panoramic sunroof. So it's it's really nice back here. It is a usable back seat for sure. I just wish there had been a little more rear seat headroom. A quick note on charging. Lyric currently uses a CCS charger, which you can see right here, but General Motors is switching to the North American charging standard, i.e. Tesla, next year, so 2025. So if you're hoping to buy a GM electric car, that is powered by a, or is charged by a Tesla connector. You just have to wait just a little longer. But right now with this CCS charging port, it will charge, the Lyric will charge up to 190 kilowatt hours, which will deliver about 77 miles of range in 10 minutes. That's not the fastest charging in the industry, but it's fast enough and you're probably not gonna be taking this car on too many road trips anyways, especially before NACS charging becomes available because there's just so many more Tesla superchargers than there are any other chargers. That's a really exciting uh, switch for the industry. I'm really excited about that, that everyone is switching over to NACS. That'll make these vehicles so much more practical in a road trip setting. But since the Lyric also does have a really solid range, you won't have to be visiting a public fast charger all that often. Anyway, it's not like this is a Lexus RZ. All right, driving the Cadillac Lyric. The very first thing I noticed when getting into this car is just how quiet it is. This is undoubtedly the quietest car I have ever driven. And I say cars are quiet often because modern cars are pretty quiet. But guys, this is on another level. Level. Truly the only thing I really hear on the inside of this cabin is when you are at about lower than 22, 23 miles an hour, you hear the uh, like the whir that this car makes to alert pedestrians that the car is driving because it would be otherwise silent because it is an EV. Um, it kind of sounds like strings playing. It goes woo 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 woo. And it reminds me of like an orchestra when they are tuning their instruments. 
but a little less sharp. Like it, it sounds pretty nice, but that kind of makes it into the cabin. But then when you are above 20 some miles an hour, it is so, so hushed in here. I was shocked. You can easily speed. I'm going 55, 50 miles an hour right now. I can barely hear, I can barely hear a thing. You go down the freeway, you can't hear the cars on either side of you. This is so impressive. When you honk, it sounds so muted compared to what it sounds like on another car when you honk and you are inside the car. It is shocking. I was at an intersection turning left. I was the third car in line. The green arrow turns on and the first car goes and the second car stops. I'm like, what are you doing? I honk my horn and they still don't move. I'm like, what's going on? And then I realized there was an ambulance coming through the intersection and I couldn't hear it because it is so damn quiet in here. Is that a little dangerous maybe? Possibly. Is it? Does it also elevate the experience of driving this car and make it feel so much more solid than it otherwise would? Absolutely. It's a really cool feeling and I absolutely love how quiet it is in this cabin. It really makes this car feel very premium. All right, now talking about the driving dynamics of the Cadillac Lyric. So this model has the 22 inch rims and I think that does maybe impact the uh, ride quality because the ride isn't very floaty. You definitely do feel bumps and this road is a little jittery and I definitely get that into the cabin through my seat in particular. Uh, it does not waft down the road as, mu as much as I would hope it would for being a Cadillac, being such a luxurious vehicle that it both looks like and feels like on the interior, I think the ride is just a bit firmer than I would have liked. And it confuses me a little bit that it would be so firm because then when you put this thing around a corner, I'm in sport mode by the way, which is the most aggressive mode, it really falls apart. You, This is not a dynamic or athletic vehicle in the slightest. It does not corner very well. I am on a twisty, windy road and oh my God, it leans so much. I'm kind of falling out of my seat um, as I'm trying to push this car through a corner. Uh, this isn't where it's at home. This is at home on the freeway, around town, in a more suburban, urban setting, or just really going in a straight line. Because this thing's pretty quick. It makes 500 horsepower, and that definitely feels pretty quick. Cadillac kind of gives you the power gradually, especially in tour mode. You don't get all of the torque right there. It, it comes on faster in sport mode, but even then, it's, it's a little bit of a whoop. It's not a instant all of the power that this car can make. Uh, so it, it, it's a little more gradual accelerating and not quite as zippy as you would expect from an EV making 500 horsepower, although it is still pretty quick. Uh, but yeah, in the corners, this thing really struggles. This, uh, again, it's not designed, clearly designed to be um, an athletic vehicle. It really does lean. So then that harsher ride from a slightly firmer suspension doesn't really make sense. I mean, my guess is this car weighs 5,500 pounds. Cadillac was trying to control some of this body roll I am experiencing uh, in this vehicle with a slightly firmer suspension, but uh, it still does roll a lot and it then doesn't have as great of a ride. I'm guessing, again, with smaller wheels, this car would ride better. Um, a vehicle that I drove recently was the Hyundai Ioniq 6, another EV. That had a softer ride than this car, uh, and that's like a $50,000, you know, entry-level EV from Hyundai versus a top-of-the-line two-row mid-size SUV from Cadillac. So different vehicles, but that one did have a softer ride, just for comparison. This has a more luxurious ambiance in the, in the cabin, especially because it is so quiet and you are just surrounded by luxury and it doesn't detract too much. It still does feel like a luxury car. I just wish the suspension was slightly softer and that it could hang on in the corners a little more. You know, EVs typically corner pretty well because all of their weight is down low. It helps the center of gravity of the vehicle be super low. But for whatever reason, this uh, Lyric does not feel really planted on the road. You, re you really do have to slow down in the corners as the car will lean on you, even in sport mode, which I'm in right now. Um, that really changes, I think, the throttle response the most and the steering firms up a bit. I've mostly been driving this car in touring mode. Uh, it's, you know, it lightens up the steering, makes the throttle response more gradual uh, for giving you power. But yeah, I'm not too impressed by uh, how this car corners. And I get it, like they don't need this car to be an athletic vehicle. 
it doesn't need to be dynamic, but it does struggle to corner, take these corners with speed. And most people won't be trying to drive on a road like this in this car. But even around town, I have noticed instances like in a empty parking garage, as I'm like trying to climb up to the top, it, it you have to take the corner slower than you would in some other vehicles because it is lumbering around the bend so much. Uh, so I, I bet something like the Acura ZDX Type S I would hope they've kind of retuned the suspension on that vehicle to make it a little sharper around the corners. I'm excited to get behind the wheel of that car in the coming months to see if Acura was able to tweak the suspension a little bit to make it more athletic because that shares uh, a very similar you know, architecture to this vehicle, an identical powertrain. It makes the same 500 horsepower, I believe 450 pound-feet of torque. Um, so. It'll be interesting to see what Acura, who's a little more of a dynamic luxury brand than just a, you know, old school, like comfort luxury brand, uh, is able to do with this suspension. I think Cadillac could have used a bit more tweaks with this suspension than, um, than what we got with this Lyric. But on the whole, I am very impressed with the Cadillac Lyric. Putting my foot down here, it's still really zippy, far more powerful than you need it to be. And it truly does feel in this cabin like a very luxurious, very well-built car. And that's largely due to how quiet it is and just how elegant the interior design is and how high quality all the materials are. This is a really nice car. Cadillac has done a great job with this Lyric. It was a bit slow to roll out, uh, but I, absolutely love it. So that's the 2024 Cadillac Lyric. I am blown away by this car. It offers really good EV technology, a new level and a new generation of luxury for the Cadillac brand, and the quietest interior I have ever been in. Really the only thing that isn't great about this car is that it's not very athletic, it's far more comfort and luxury oriented, and I prefer a slightly more dynamic drive. And if you are, feel like me, I would recommend the Audi Q8 e-tron, although that vehicle has less range and is more expensive than this car, which is why the Lyric is so impressive. I'm super excited and super blown away by what Cadillac was able to do with their first EV and I'm really looking forward to their upcoming EVs with the Optic, Vistic, and Escalade IQ. I think we're entering a really exciting generation of products from Cadillac. Thanks for watching, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.